We're going to start off with good side posture positioning, right? And by that I mean the bottom leg is straight, the table's adjusted for the patient's size. You're going to be in the middle of the table, right? You're going to be comfortably lying on the table, right? Now, in order to do a drop, you want to engage as much of your mass as possible. So if you're doing a drop where you're just flexing at the hips and the waist, like that, I mean that's a drop, but it's not really engaging, it's engaging maybe half of your mass, right? It's not engaging your mass fully. So when we, and there's another, there's a downside to that as well in that it will hinge your back and you'll be vulnerable to injuries in that lumbosacral area or your low back, right? So it's not a good way to, it's not a good habit to get into. The drop is very challenging to learn because you need to develop the ability to literally fall on your patient, right? And it's not really intuitive to fall. We generally don't like to fall, right? So you will overcome that with some practice. Just like uh, when you're learning to snowboard or ski, you have to learn how to lean into the hill, to be perpendicular to the slope that you're on. But the natural tendency when you're doing that is to actually lean back, right? Because whenever you're on a hill, you don't lean forward, you lean back. But that's like trying to steer a bicycle with the front wheel while you're doing a wheelie, you know, in that analogy. It right, doesn't work. You need to be over your, your snowboard or your skis in order to make them turn. So it's not natural is what I'm pointing. The point is it's not natural. It's not natural to fall either. So you have to kind of train yourself to fall. So here's the drill for this. Right? What we're going to do is again start our patient in a nice side posture position. And we're going to step in. And in order to drop, you really have to have this knee free to move. This knee has to be able to bend. Front knee has to be able to bend. You can't get that front knee to bend because you're facing too far forward. You're not going to be able to engage that vertical movement. So you've got to get the knee forward and in as close to the table as possible. I'm going to bring the arms up a little bit so they're just out of the way. I'm going to have you lie like that. I'm going to take my arms. I'm going to wrap around my patient. And I'm all my weights on my front leg. All right, and what I want to do is literally learn and to become comfortable falling, you okay? Yep. Just falling on my patient. If you watch my front knee, you all right? Mm -hmm. You'll see it bend as I fall. No problems? Mm -hmm. And there it is, I come up and literally let myself crash down to the patient, all right? Again, it's an important skill to practice because it's not a natural thing that just that you're, you're able to just get up and do, right? But coming back to our formula, force equal mass times acceleration. We want to be able to accelerate that mass and that's what that skill is all about. So let's break out and remember it's a, literally, it's, you're not going to adjust your patient this way but during the drill let's get a nice wraparound to do the, do the drill. When we're using a drop Right. Okay, I'm just demonstrating this. Right. Remember your your front knee is going to be free, right? And you're going to bring the patient under you, and you're literally going to let yourself fall on the patient, and that's what's going to give you your your mass, right? So your contact doesn't have to be heavy. Let's say it was a PSIS or a lumbosacral contact. You okay? Mm -hmm. All right. There's my contact. I've got my mass in place. And now I can just, I can use that delivery, that, that mass and acceleration of my body to create that lumbosacral movement. All right. So let's get you back into position here. Straighten the bottom leg. And let's get this top one up. I'm going to move you back a little bit. And let this come forward a little bit like that. So kicks. Kicks can very easily be practiced by balancing or holding on, right? And just getting 
the need to flex and extend. Right? Keep a little dorsiflexion in the ankle. What you want to avoid in a kick is hip extension. That's usually way too much, long lever stuff, so that's what to avoid. And to practice getting good at kicking, you need to, again, not, you need to relax first. Just let yourself relax. And then let the kick just come out. Right? When you, when you kick, you want to make sure that you don't extend the knee all the way. Right? You want to get in the habit of extending the kick just short of being totally extended. That way you'll never hurt yourself. If you let your knee come into terminal extension, you're going to end up with some knee problems if you do a lot of kicks. So I'm going to do it in slow motion. You want to stop like right there. Right? Never fully extend it. And it's, a ha it's just something that comes with practice. First practice it nice and slow right and then you can speed it up a little bit and you can easily catch yourself before you get to the very end of the extension right so in practice we do kicks in two ways we do them from 90 degrees to the table and the patient or we do them slightly angled and I have put that up there on your handout as 90 and 45 although 45 is anything angled towards the head of the table when we utilize kicks, we're always going to place our, our, our leg in the same place relative to the patient in either method. Right? 90 degrees goes better with pulls, and the 45 degrees goes better with pushes. And I'll demonstrate both of those. So when we do to, do, utilize a kick, we want to put our knee right near the patient's ischial tuberosity. And we want to put our foot, the dorsum of our foot, right near their knee. So our leg is going to be along the back, the, anterior, the uh, posterior lateral portion of their thigh. And here's, the, here's what you're, again, I'm going to, this is going to be a repeating theme. You have to be able to relax. Because if you don't let your leg relax prior to the kick, so this is relaxed, right? It's relaxed. I'm not, I have no resistance against it. As soon as I load it up with resistance against the patient, again, it's like putting the brakes on when you're trying to accelerate. So here's my, my contact to stabilize the patient. I step in perpendicular. I put my knee over by the patient's ischial tuberosity and my foot's by their, their knee. Right? And the kick is, and this is called hovering, right? I'm just hovering above it to show you that I'm not loading it up. Here's, here's what a lot of student docs do at this point. They'll load it up like that. Right? So now I've, I've got tension in my leg. I've rotated the patient. You feel it. You're resisting me unconsciously because I've tightened you more than you need to be, and I'm gonna, not going to be able to muster up any velocity. All right? so remember, I'm not going to excel. I won't be able to accelerate. All right? So <clears throat> this is all about force generation. So there's my, my contact, and I'm relaxed. And the drill to practice this is just You okay? Uh -huh. Just like that. Just get in the habit of just being nice and comfortable and fluid with the kick. Now if I wanted to do this at a little bit of an angle, my knee's gonna go in the same place, right? My leg's gonna go in exactly the same place, but I'm angled forward a little bit. The only difference is this puts me in a little bit of, be little bit of a better position to actually push this instead of pull it, right? So in a push scenario, um, I bring the patient under me more, and I just use my contact like a hypothenor like that. And again, it's just going to be just a little bit of a push and a kick. All right. So let's break out and practice this on each other at 90 degrees and 45 degrees. Also practice it just without a patient, just standing there. So step back a little bit so you're just touching the platform. All right. So this is going to work great like between T3, T4, maybe T8, T9. I'm going to turn my side to the patient to engage my upper pec. I can use a towel for this as well. The delivery, the force generation for this comes from actually the patient's mass. right? I'm going to use a contact and engage the patient's weight to create this separation. I am going to accelerate, however.
And the acceleration is going to come from my legs, right? It's going to come from my ability to vertically sink and rise a little bit. So there's a number of, there's a variety of different contacts you can use for this and a variety of different patient positions. Sometimes the doctors will do, the patients will, the doctors or the patients do this, right, either side, elbows in together, and they'll wrap around the front in this manner. What I like to do is actually have my patient cross their arm. That brings the scapular out and also gives me a, a platform to contact in the front. And then also I like to get the other arm out of the way and that also brings the other scapula out of the way as well. All right, so here's my contact. It's just me using my upper pack, possibly with a towel here, to come up and make my contact like that. Right. And the arms come around and the purpose of this is to connect him to me. Right? Because when I accelerate with my legs, I want the patient to move with me, not to slide on my contact, which is my upper pack. Right? So when you set up for this, you want to be, make sure that you have enough bend in your legs to get this vertical movement going on, just like that. Right? This is going to be uh, for extension because he's upright and he's in, in a standing posture. Uh, it'll move however it's preloaded, but for this drill, we're creating extension. And this is not really, I'm not demonstrating this for the adjustment, although we will do this adjustment. I'm demonstrating this for the benefit of adding this to your drills, right? And here's the drill right here, just coming up and down. Right? So I reach around, and again, notice I'm not going to come in and really give him a hard squeeze, because I don't need to. Right? I'm not thrusting with my arms. The purpose of my arms is to actually connect the patient to me. Remember, the thorax is not that extensible. It's got the least range of motion of any part of the axial skeleton. As patients get older, they get stiffer and stiffer. You've got the costochondro, costal sternal junctions. They're not true joints. They don't move like the other, like synovial joints. And they're, they're more vulnerable to becoming irritated or separated if you're too vigorous, right? So again, so you said it's okay to demo this? Come around. Some docs like to use breathing assist. It's really not necessary. Just, you know, kind of make sure you're just kind of following the patient's breathing pattern. Reach around. There's my contact. Not up like this because that's going to load the glenohumeral joint. Just come around the front. There is a bit of an I to S component to it. Because if I go down, you feel how that's a little irritating to your thorax? Yeah, so I, right. I kind of lift it up a little bit like that. And the adjustment comes from this vertical, vertical movement. And there you have it, just like that. All right. So again, just enough contact with the arms to get the patient to go with you. You don't have to have a lot of excursion. Sometimes just a little bit will do the trick for you. You don't have to lift the patient up. You just have to get that acceleration in the legs as you come up vertically. So let's break out and practice that. Thanks. So for the triceps twitch, we're literally just going to use our arms to do the thrust. It's a force generation, force generator just using your arms. So the nice, best way to demonstrate this is to just use this bilateral hypothenar, getting close to the spine, just like that. And get over the contact, but don't make the contact heavy. Don't load it up a lot. Just get over it, right? And it's not a heavy type of delivery. It's just a triceps twitch, right? So it's just like that, and then just, just a little, little bit of a thrust, just like that, okay? The next one is a straight arm thrust, and that does engage your body weight, right? The best way to do that drill, either on a patient or on the table, is to use the bilateral phenar contacts, Right. And for this, I do lean into it with my body weight, and I use my momentum of my body to generate the force. Again, I'm not thrusting with my arms. By now, you should have figured out that using your arms to, do the, to create the thrust is not the best force generator. But using your body is what's going to give you the mass component of that formula. Right? So for a straight arm thrust, again, it's just using using your body weight to create that.